Hey guys, so we're working on the hot air balloon and a camera lawn kappa video solution from problem set three on the homework. So let's get right into this. So a hot air balloon has just lifted, oops. A hot air balloon has just lifted off and is rising at a constant rate of 1.1 meters per second. Suddenly, one of the passengers realizes she has left her camera on the ground. A friend picks it up and tosses it straight upward with an initial speed of 10.9 meters per second. If the passenger is 2.7 meters above her friend when the camera is tossed, how much time does it take for the camera to reach her? So our first step in every single problem like this is going to be to draw a picture and write down the information that we know and the information we're looking to find by splitting it up into events. So to start off on drawing our pictures, first we need to label our axes. And next we need to determine what is going to be our positive direction. So we know that the air balloon has just lifted off the ground. So we're going to assume it's traveling straight up and then it's not traveling along the x-axis. And so because of that, we're going to say the upwards direction of y is going to be a positive value. This is going to become important later when we look at the acceleration vectors. So we're going to draw our balloon. We're going to color code it yellow just for the sake of keeping things uniform throughout the problem. And so here's our balloon with our passenger rising along the y-axis. Directly below is going to be our friend and that's going to be represented by blue. So we can look at this and we know that the passenger is 2.7 meters above her friend. So we can label this 2.7 meters, and we can label where the friend is as zero meters. We know that the hot air balloon is rising, so our velocity vector for the balloon is going to be going straight up. And we know that the camera is being tossed off the ground, so it's traveling upwards. But since it's been released from the hand, it is only subjected to the force of gravity. And since it's only subjected to the force of gravity, it's actually in free fall. So because of this, the only thing acting upon it is going to be g, which is our acceleration vector of the camera, and that is equal to negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So the reason that, let me make that a little bit neater. The reason we said 9.81 meters per second um, instead of a positive is because since we already established earlier, I said this was gonna be important, we already established that the positive y direction is gonna be up. So since gravity obviously acts in the negative y direction down, um, that is why we're gonna have a, the acceleration vector of c is gonna equal to gravity which is going to be our negative 9.81. So that's kind of all we can do for our picture right now. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a table of information and we're going to split this up into two events. So that way we can look at event one, which is going to be um, when the camera leaves the friend's hand. And then we're gonna have event two, and this one is going to be when the passenger catches the camera. All right, so let's start filling some stuff in. We have our time, and then we are gonna have the position of the balloon, the velocity of the balloon, and the acceleration of the balloon. And the other thing that we're going to have is we are going to have the position of the camera, velocity of the camera, and acceleration of the camera. Those are our three kinematic uh, quantities that we're looking for and that we use in all of our equations. So let's see. If you're keeping up with any of the colors of what we have, we have blue as our camera, 
So that's going to be these three columns. And yellow is our balloon. So that's going to be these three columns. So starting off, we have time of zero. That's when our initial event is. It is immediately you throw the camera, nothing has happened. But what we do know is that our balloon is already 2.70 meters off the ground. We know that its velocity is 1.10 meters per second. And we know that it's at a constant rate. So if it's at a constant velocity, it's not accelerating. So we're going to have zero meters per second. And then as for event one of the camera, we know that it starts at position zero, which we drew on our graph. And then it is at an initial speed of 10.9 meters per second. And the acceleration, as we also established in our picture when we determined that gravity was the only force acting upon it, is going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And now we can fill in some of the stuff for event two. So we know that we are looking at how much time, so we need to find time, is it going to take? Um, and later in the problem, we're also going to try to figure out how high is the passenger, so we don't know this yet either, but we can label this the height of the balloon, height of the passenger. And then our velocity is still moving at that constant rate, so this is still going to be 1.10 meters per second, and since it's constant, we still have 0 meters per second squared as our acceleration. And now as for the camera, we're going to do the same thing as what we did over here, is we're going to enable, name this um, the height of the camera. The velocity, we don't know, but we actually don't need that, need that in this problem. And then our acceleration is still going to be working at that um, negative 9.81 because of gravity. So we have almost everything, or we have the whole table filled out. We just have a few question marks to fill in. So our first thing is going to now is going to be to solve. And so I wrote out our equations over here to the side, and we know we are looking for time. So obviously we can't use this bottom equation that's off the table. And the other thing that we could look at is we could either look at now this velocity equation or this position equation. So we could do velocity for the balloon, but we don't really have the velocity for um, the camera, so that would be like a lot of working around of things to do. So we're going to try using this position equation. So we are going to say x of t, and we're going to actually call this hb. We're going to turn this into hb because we're looking for the height of the balloon. And our initial position is 2.70 meters plus v naught was 1.10 times t, um, plus 1 half, acceleration is 0, t squared. Since it's 0, we can take that out of our equation. And we are left with 2.70 meters plus 1.10 t. So I know that doesn't solve anything yet, but just stick with me for a second. So now we have, let's see, this is going to be x of so now we have the position of the, cam of the camera at time t, and this is going to, we're going to call hc. And we start at position, which is 0 meters, plus our initial velocity was 10 10.9 um, meters per second, and that was given to us in the problem, and then plus one half times negative 9.81 t squared. And this simplifies down to 10.9 t minus, because we're just going to move that negative out front, one half times 9.81 t squared. So now we're left with h of b, h of c, and t. Those are the two things we need to find. But if we think about it, when the camera is when it meets the passenger, they're going to be at the same height. So we can now set h of b equal to h of c. 
So we're going to come down here and do that. We have now 2.70 meters. Um, we're just going to leave that at 2.70. I don't know why I did the M. And we're going to say plus 1.10t. And that equals 10.9t minus 1 half 9.81t squared. And if we move that all to one side, we are left with negative 4.91t squared plus 9.8t minus 2.7. So we now have to do the quadratic equation because obviously this isn't factorable and we have this t squared right here which gives us a bit of a problem. I'm going to move over to the side where I just have a little bit more room but we're going to get t is equal to negative b so negative 9.8 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times negative 9.4.91 times negative 2.7 all over 2a which is going to be 2 times negative 4.91 and this ends up giving us, I've already done the calculations, it gives us 0 0.33 seconds. So we can come back over here to our problem and we can fill in t is equal to 0 0.33 seconds. So it is a quadratic, which means that we should have two solutions. But if we think about it, we're going to have the initial interception and then if this was the camera and this is where the person is and say so that's the basket so we have the initial interception and then if it were to continue its arc it would continue up it would peak and then it would make its way back down we don't need this point right here where it would intercept again with the basket if that were there so since we don't need this second time yes there is one but we're going to stick with the earliest time because we're going to assume the friend catches it on the way up rather than on the way back down so moving on to part b how high is the passenger when the camera reaches her once again we are going to use here let me fill out that time in our table now that we have it it's going to be 0 0.33 seconds so now that we have our time in the table we can look and we can now use this position equation again just to solve for the height of the um, passenger when the camera reaches her so this is really simple we're going to say the height once again stick with just h of b to make things easy is equal to 2.70 meters and then plus 1.10 that's our v naught times our time that we just figured out in this part right here and now we're going to add one half acceleration time squared like the previous problem this is going to cancel out due to that zero acceleration and this is a really really simple calculation and you get 3.06 meters high and so our last thing is just going to be to check does this make sense um, nothing really complicated with this we kind of touched on part a already where does this make sense yes because it is time t is positive And small we know it's not going to take 12 seconds for it to travel three meters um, especially with the high speed that it starts off with and it also makes sense that it's going to be the first of the two values that we are going to get from the quadratic um, so yes that value does make sense and then for part B this also makes sense um, the new h of b it's greater than the initial value of the balloon so x naught of the balloon um, and so because of that we know that the balloon is continuing on its upward path and that makes sense because the balloon is continuously rising it's not coming back down to the ground so 
yeah, that's our problem. So we can fill in our heights. Like I said, we never needed this velocity in the first place. But just to recap, you're going to draw your picture with your information, fill in a table of events, and from that you can figure out which equation to use, solve for the variables that you're missing, and then check does this make sense. Um, hopefully that helps with the hot air balloon and camera problem.